This week on Christian World News, a decade ago, political change was sweeping through the Middle East. How did it affect Christians and other religious minorities? Some face more pressure than ever, while others are seeing glimpses of freedom. Plus, Iran's silent revolution. Millions are turning away from the Islamic regime and their traditional faith. Many are turning to Jesus Christ. And the boys from Baghdad, how a prayer and a chance encounter delivered them from poverty and gave them hope of new life. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. I'm George Thomas. Today, we have a special look at the church in the Middle East. You know, 10 years ago, the Arab Spring was rocking the Middle East and North Africa. But today, is life different for Christians and other minorities? Senior Washington correspondent Jennifer Wishon takes a look. There's no question the Arab Spring ushered in some bright spots, but it also created a deadly vacuum for Christians and other minorities. From Tunisia to Egypt to Syria, Americans watched with hopeful eyes as fed up citizens protested oppressive governments. What we saw uh, was people, you know, tired of corruption, people of uh, limited rights, limited opportunity, economic uh, deprivation. So they took to the streets, but, but uh, you know, freedom was a major component of that. The protests sparked new debates over religious freedom. A number of countries rewrote their constitutions, but most of their brutal laws remained. In Egypt, we've seen Shias, Quranists, Christians uh, prosecuted under blasphemy laws. And today, while Egypt is allowing the construction of churches, Saudi Arabia is revising its textbooks, and Sudan has repealed its apostasy law, the Arab Spring ushered in a terrifying era for Christians. In 2014, ISIS fighters massacred a group of 21 Coptic Christian expatriate workers on a beach in Libya broadcasting the horrific footage for all to see. ISIS launched a genocidal campaign against Yazidis, Christians, and Shia Muslims in Iraq as the government turned a blind eye. Violence against Coptic Christians in Egypt intensified. And across the region, blasphemy laws actually expanded, criminalizing the worship of minorities. At a recent hearing, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom discussed how America can encourage meaningful change. Panelists suggested imposing sanctions on persecutors, tying strings to the billions of tax dollars the region gets in U.S. assistance, and having U.S. officials meet with opposition leaders, along with heads of state, to highlight the importance of diversity. Bashir says privately countries often acknowledge the benefits of religious freedom, but maintain the status quo to appease extremists. You know, at some point you have to you have to move it forward and, and isolate those uh, fringe elements who are making those threats um, and, and move forward, come into this 21st century. Religious freedom advocates agree the Trump administration raised the profile of international religious freedom. Now they're anxious to see President Biden's take on this important tenet of American diplomacy. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Joining me now is Rita El Munayer. She's CEO of Sat7, a Christian broadcasting ministry to the Middle East. Rita, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. You recently said that this is God's season for the Middle East and North Africa. What did you mean by that? It's the new generation, the new generation that are growing up to have big questions. Uh, yes, with all the hopelessness that they live, with all the insecurities, they're having the questions about what is next. And I believe with the Christian television, with the programs that aiming to the new generation, because the Middle East and North Africa is a young generation, uh, almost 60% under the age of 25. So if we give this new generation the hope that is in Jesus Christ, if we give this new generation the faith, the forgiveness, the reconciliation that is in the word of God, I think we win the Middle East today. The pandemic shut down nations and took millions of lives. Yet during this time, Sat7 Ministry has seen some extraordinary responses in this part of the world. Uh, tell us briefly what's happening. 
It was a great year for people or for us as management to think and strategize. And in 2020, we hired the three people for main positions in Sat7, and they are young. And these three people helped in video on demand. So we launched, we launched our uh, Sat7 Plus app for video on demand. So you can go binge watching all kinds of programs in Turkish, Arabic, and Farsi, of course, Christian programs. We uh, strengthen our presence on social media with 10 brands. And also we hired the audience relation manager, who's the one who started the counseling online just to be there for people and telling them that you are not alone. To that point, talk about uh, the responses you have seen from the countries. What specific countries have you seen the greatest engagement, for example? The greatest engagements are from Iran. I mean, even though the numbers are not like very huge, like the Arab world, because Arab world 22 countries, and then you have one country, Iran. But the quality of engagement and stories that we hear from Iran is just fantastic. I'll tell you like one example. There's one lady writing to us said, I cannot, I'm Christian. I, you know, I, I become Christian because of your programs, because of course she is a Muslim. And I love Jesus Christ. But I don't know anywhere to go, you know, not a church. I don't have a, I don't know a pastor. I'm in Tehran alone and isolated. But when you pray on the screen, I pray on the screen with you. When you worship on the screen, I worship on the screen with you. You become a church in my home. And one day I pray that I will see you in person to pray and worship with you. And this day, my friend, when I see you, I will bow down and wash your feet and tell you thank you for what you're doing to the isolated church, isolated Christians in Iran. Mm. Uh, how important is this media revolution in bringing the powerful message of Jesus Christ? You are there in the homes of people, even though you're not invited. So you're there on satellite broadcasting, and this is what you do primary, what Sat7 do primary. And also, we are on the video on demand. We are on all devices, the iOS and the Android. We are on a Apple TV also, and then they can watch. They can watch programs that have a goal, programs that can tell them more about the love of Jesus Christ, programs that can uh, give them the hope that we don't see in this hopeless Middle East. How can believers pray for and participate in helping preach the gospel to this very strategic part of the world? Please visit our website, www.sat7usa.org. Or if one day, God will open a door, come and visit us. You will fall in love with the people in the Middle East. We have studios in Turkey. We have a studio in Cyprus. We have a studio in Lebanon. We have a studio in Egypt, in the UK. Come and meet the people. And also pray that the Lord will open more doors for us. We are now broadcasting also from the churches, the underground churches in North Africa, Indonesia, Algeria. And we want to reach more people with the love of Christ, this love that is the only hope for us in the Middle East and North Africa. Rita El Munir, thank you so much for coming on the broadcast. Thank you. Up next, in Iran, people are disgusted with the Islamic regime and millions are turning away from Islam. Some are finding new faith in Jesus Christ. We'll have that exciting report in a moment. You can experience the kingdom of heaven right now. CBN presents The Nearness of Heaven. We're going to be talking about people who went to heaven, who had encounters with the kingdom of God. He let me experience what it felt like, and there's more love than you can imagine. In this brand new teaching from CBN, you'll discover what the Bible has to say about heaven and our lives in eternity. How to know for certain that heaven is your future home. How seeking God's presence now will satisfy your heart's desire and prepare you for what's ahead. Plus, how to experience the reality of God's kingdom right here, right now. You're gonna experience peace and joy and life to the fullest. Get this exciting new teaching from CBN today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to become a CBN partner and receive your copy of The Nearness of Heaven. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. 
It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living Tuesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Stay connected with CBN News all day across our platforms. Folks, welcome back to Christian World News. In the Islamic Republic of Iran, a growing number of people are turning to Christ even in the face of persecution. Not too long ago, a historic survey uncovered a seismic shift happening inside the country. Take a look. Two Dutch professors interviewed more than 50,000 Iranians online for an unprecedented survey covering topics from faith to politics to religious life. The authors say they discovered a huge shift that should fundamentally change how we look at Iran today. One major standout from professors Poiman Tamina Arab and Amar Maliki is that despite Iran's census claims that 99.5% of the population is Shiite Islam, only 32% of their respondents identified as such. The next largest group are the nons at 22%, which led the authors to conclude that Iranians are abandoning religion for secularism. Broadly speaking, this survey is important because it puts data behind the largely non-empirical argument that analysts have been forced to deal with, which is that Iranian society is less religious. This survey, this data proves that Iranian society is exceptionally less religious. Approximately half of the population reported losing their religion. 60% said they do not pray anymore. Younger people reported higher levels of dissatisfaction with religion. And an overwhelming number of respondents were critical of authorities using strict Islamic laws to govern daily life. For example, 72% of those surveyed opposed the law mandating all women to wear a hijab, the Islamic veil covering. And when the authors dug a little deeper on questions central to that faith, even less numbers believed in the core tenets of Shia Islam. Only 37% believed in life after death. 30% believed in heaven and hell. An even lower number, 25%, believed in the coming of their Islamic savior, known as the Mahdi, or 12th Imam. All of these trends, the pushback on the hijab, the lack of belief in the, in the coming of the Mahdi, the lack of a willingness to identify with Shiism, the willingness to identify with other faiths, are all a result of politics in the past 40 years of the Iranian government. And as the Islamic Republic has tried to shove religion down the throat of Iranians to mask their authoritarian grasp on power, you've seen Iranians contest their authoritarianism by contesting faith itself. The survey also revealed that as Islam diminishes, Christianity is growing. 1.5% of those surveyed identified themselves as Christian. And that is compared to about uh, 30 years ago being less than 1%. Uh, that less than 1%, everybody thought it was less than 0.5%. Uh, Mike Ansari of Mohabbat TV, a ministry that broadcasts the gospel into Iran, tells CBN News the survey is significant because it lends credence to what mission groups have been saying for years. This data is important because it's indicative of the fact that uh, in the country of Iran, in the midst of persecution and Islamic rule, Iranians are turning their back uh, to, to their faith, to their institutional faith, and, and receiving Christianity as a new faith. Iran is one of the most dangerous places for Christians and other minority faith groups. Non-Muslims are often arrested or severely tortured for sharing or practicing their faith. Yet, in a sign of changing times, the survey found that 41% of respondents believed all religions should have the right to public proselytizing, and around 54% said it was a good idea for their children 
to learn about other faiths in school. You know, when it comes to religious freedom, there is no question Saudi Arabia has a very long way to go. But it's also true that few countries can boast the type of change happening in the, in, in the kingdom today. Once again, here's Jennifer Wishan. Christmas trees? Even talk of a future Christian church? No, this isn't a fantasy. The kingdom of Saudi Arabia is making and considering changes once thought impossible. The kingdom of Saudi Arabia is incrementally moving in the right direction. Johnny Moore, who sits on the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, never thought religious liberty in Saudi Arabia was possible. Now he thinks it's inevitable. It's still illegal for Christians to worship publicly, but in recent years, the kingdom's religious police have eased off raiding worship services. I would love uh, one day, you know, to, to uh, celebrate uh, Christmas on the Arabian uh, Peninsula. Uh, you know, and, and this year, by the way, they allowed uh, Christmas trees, you know, in, 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 in the kingdom. And increasingly, you know, the rumors that, that Saudi Arabia might actually consider having a Christian church, you know, in, in, and uh, in, in the kingdom in some, some capacity. At this point, these are all rumors, but the very fact that they are rumors is, is significant. Especially in light of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's aim to reform the kingdom's judicial system, Sharia law based on a strict interpretation of the Quran, one that's not tolerant of other faiths. Is this a pretty big deal? For the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia to say, no, we're gonna have, we're gonna have laws like the rest of the world, and we're going to put those laws down on paper. I mean, this is an astonishing reform. Watchdog groups also point to improvements in the kingdom's school textbooks, removing some hateful references to Jews, Christians, and others. Increasingly, we're seeing strong uh, leadership throughout the Arab world that is pushing back on extremism and saying it's not enough to stop the extremist. The real way of stopping extremism is raising a generation that doesn't have to fear those who worship differently. Incremental moves that may one day lead to Muslims, Christians, and Jews coexisting on the Arabian Peninsula. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Up next, the boys from Baghdad. Two brothers were facing poverty and starvation when a prayer and a chance encounter turned their lives around. See who it was right after this. Orphans Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news. Exclusive stories and programs. Credible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN Newswatch. Because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. And what does Jesus mean that the kingdom of heaven is within you or within your midst? The kingdom of God is at hand. That means you can literally reach up and grab it. His presence is right there with you. If you're saved, if you're a Christian, Jesus is dwelling in your heart. The kingdom of God is in your midst. The kingdom of God is at hand. The nearness of heaven, available now. Welcome back to this special Christian World News. Muhammad and Ahmed grew up Muslim in Baghdad, Iraq, 
abused and abandoned by their father, they often lacked food and other necessities. Then one day, a prayer sparked a chance encounter that changed their lives forever. This story comes to us from our friends at the ministry, I Found the Truth. Take a look. The first encounter that I've had with God was when I, when me and my brother were outside saying, if there's a God out there, then show yourself. The first time I, I, I had an encounter with God was when I uh, had an eight in four days because my dad didn't, didn't want to provide. And so I get on my knees and I'm, and I'm praying. I'm like, if there's a God out there, if you're real, if you're out there, please provide for me because I am starving right now. And, and I actually believed something inside of me. I, I felt like he was going to provide, even though I didn't believe in him. And surely he'll provide, you know? I'm, I'm in desperate need. He's going to come through. And uh, me and my brother are outside uh, with, with no shoes. And uh, I noticed that there's a guy running. At, 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 a, at a point, at a view, and as he's running, he sees me, and I was barefoot. At the time, it was it was really hot, and as, as we're walking on the floor, it's it, like our feet was burning. And as he approaches us, he was a U.S. general. This general uh, named uh, General Petraeus comes up comes up to me and my brother, and which we didn't know was such a a, a big figure at the time. You know, we, we just thought he was an American soldier. Uh, he brings my mom outside. He brings a translator and he's telling my mom, why doesn't your son have any shoes? And my mom goes on and tells him that um, she's she's in a really bad place right now. And she couldn't doesn't have the enough funds or money to provide to get us shoes. And then he calls in a unit and he brings them in. And then these units open their cars and they're just bringing us Gatorade bottles and food and just providing for us. And after um, getting to know the general, he offered my mom a job with the U.S. Army. A few years down the line, you know, my mom was getting opportunities to work with them. She basically moved up the ranks to where, like, she was a translator and she was known. She had gotten a name with the American Army. And after she made her way up to a translator, she started getting threats because she was working with the U.S. Army. And before you know it, the general, he's like, we guys, we can't keep you here because it's very dangerous for you. And, and as he comes and tells my mom, he's like, how would you like to go to America? As we get to the U.S., we just kind of look for the Arab community because that, that was our first instance. Okay, where, where, how can we blend in? There was an Arabic community where we were at and they had told us about, you know, churches are providing uh, food, they're providing furniture, they're providing clothes. We had looked into where like, you know, we're just gonna go into this church, get what we need, you know, we're not gonna talk to them because, you know, we still had our Muslim background. Just walking in through the church doors, I felt the Holy Spirit just struck me. As soon as I walked in, everybody's looking at me and my family, and, and they they have these crazy smiles on their face. I was like, why are they smiling? Like, oh, these people don't know us. Why are they smiling? Why are they so happy? And right there and then I knew, I was like, whatever they have, I want that. I want to be happy like that. There was this guy by the name um, David. Uh, he he was just going around the, the community, just helping Arab people, just helping them and just, I feel like he was spreading the, uh, the gospel, just telling them about Jesus. And he got us connected through a church in uh, upstate New York that we came to know. And uh, they just start to love on us. They, they, they're like, oh, you know, how are you? What's your name? Where are you from? They just wanted to get to know us. They wanted to build a relationship. This family had gotten close to us from the church uh, that was providing, you know, we just wanted to stuff and get out. But they, they had reached out, uh, treated us like family. They, they didn't thing about them that was weird you know they didn't push their their religion on us they're, they didn't uh, push Christianity onto us you know they, they just kept coming week after week taking us to church every Sunday and uh, little by little uh, I found out that that's the thing that was making them happy that was the thing that was uh, that I was missing in my heart that that's what I needed I, I started having questions I'm like who is this who is this guy that you guys are talking about you know I'm like I want to know after knowing who he is going to church and getting my questions answered I came to know him and I accepted him into my life 2014 2015 is when I was like God I want to give my life to you and I want to I want to give you my whole heart and uh, Islam's teaching is uh, 
do this, do that. You know, you can't get into heaven unless you do all these good deeds. Experiencing Jesus and God, I'm like, there is nothing I have to do. God already loves me for who I am. There is nothing I could do on earth that will make me right with God. And it's so simple, but looking at it, you know, like if you believe in him, you're gonna adapt to his values and his morals. And, and, and every day I wake up, I go, I wanna be more like Jesus. It came to a point where I did trust him. I said, okay, Lord, I'm choosing to trust you. I'm giving you my life and I'm giving you full authority of everything that I have. Aligning myself with the Lord has shown me how God can transform your life and what he can do through it all. And he really showed me my purpose. He showed me what I was meant to be. You can find more testimonies of Muslims learning about the truth about Jesus at the website ifoundthetruth.com. We'll be back right after this. From Washington, D.C. Good evening and welcome to Faith Nation. Uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, John Jessup, Jenna Browder, and Eric Phillips. Bringing you the political news that matters. Regulations on the energy industry are going to have dramatic ripple effects throughout the economy. News you can trust. We're people who are committed to protecting the most weakest and the most vulnerable. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6. You can experience the kingdom of heaven right now. CBN presents The Nearness of Heaven. We're going to be talking about people who went to heaven, who had encounters with the kingdom of God. He let me experience what it felt like, and there's more love than you can imagine. In this brand new teaching from CBN, you'll discover what the Bible has to say about heaven and our lives in eternity. How to know for certain that heaven is your future home. How seeking God's presence now will satisfy your heart's desire and prepare you for what's ahead. Plus, how to experience the reality of God's kingdom right here, right now. You're going to experience peace and joy and life to the fullest. Get this exciting new teaching from CBN today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to become a CBN partner and receive your copy of The Nearness of Heaven as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Finally today, an encouragement to pray for those in the Muslim world. Back in 2014, Dr. David Garrison wrote the book, A Wind in the House of Islam, documenting the masses of Muslims who are turning to Christ in different parts of the world. At what point, Paul Felidis, who publishes the Muslim World Prayer Guide, asked him, when did these movements start? Dr. Garrison consulted his research and told Paul it began about 30 years ago. At that point, Paul's eyes filled with tears, and he said that's when he began publishing this important prayer guide. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining us. Until next week, from all of us here, goodbye and God bless.